In this video, you're going to learn how to simplify square roots involving a negative number. So we're going to go through six examples together. You're going to learn how to do this. The first thing we want to talk about is what exactly is the square root of negative 1? Well, the square root of negative 1, we represent that with this letter i for imaginary. Think about it for a minute. Say if you had the square root of a negative 16. See, when you take the square root, it's really saying what number times itself is equal to this quantity underneath the square root. So when you look at this one, you say, well, hmm, if I take 4 times itself, that's positive 16. Or if I take negative 4 times itself, that's also positive 16. So how can I take the square root of a negative number? And that's where the i comes in. So let's take a look at the first example, and I'll show you how this works. So when we have the square root of negative 48, we can break this down into the square root of negative 1 times the square root of positive 48. The square root of negative 1, we represent that with the letter i for imaginary. And then the square root of 48, we can break this down into 16 times 3. Now the reason I picked 16 is because it's a perfect square. You try to pull out the perfect squares like 4, 9, 16, 25, etc. And then it's easy to take the square root of 16, that's just going to be 4. So we end up with 4i square root of 3. Now the square root of 3 is kind of like the remainder, it's like the leftover. This is not a perfect square, so that stays underneath the square root sign. Now let's look at number 2. I'm going to show you a different way of approaching these. So the square root of negative 72, again we can say this is like square root of negative 1 times square root of positive 72. The square root of negative 1, we represent that with the letter i for imaginary. But this time, instead of dividing out perfect squares, let's do a prime factorization tree. Let's see what 72 is made up of. So 9 times 8 is 72. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 2 is 8. And 4 is 2 times 2. So you want to break it down until you get to just the prime numbers, which are the numbers that can only be divided by 1 in themselves. Then what you do when you're taking the square root is you look for two of the same number, like a pair of the same number. It doesn't have to be the number two, it just has to be the same number twice. And so what we do is we group those together and for each group we pull one out in front of the square root sign. The reason being this is like 3 squared, see 3 times 3 is 3 squared. What's the square root of 3 squared? That's just going to be 3. Or another way to think about it, this is 9, what's the square root of 9? Just 3. This is 4. What's the square root of 4? That's just going to be 2. Or you can think of this as 2 squared and the square root of 2 squared. The square and the square root cancel one another out, just leaving us with 2. And then we have this i here in front as well. And then we have this 2 here left over. That's going to stay underneath the square root. It's kind of like the remainder. So if we multiply these together now, we get 6i square root of 2. And that's your final simplified form. So a lot of people like this prime factorization tree. Uh, a little bit better, especially when there's larger numbers. If you know perfect squares that divide out just quickly, you can do that. It might be a little bit faster. But again, a lot of people do like this method. For number 3 now, let's look at this one. Square root of negative 150. Well, we know this is square root of negative 1 times square root of positive 150. Square root of negative 1 we know is i for imaginary. 150, let's break that down into 15 times 10. 15 is 3 times 5 and 10 is 5 times 2. And look, there's that pair that we were talking about. That's like 5 squared, and the square root of 5 squared is just 5. Or you can think of this as 25. The square root of 25 is just 5. So that 5 comes out in front of the square root. We have the i there as well. And then what we have left over is this 3 and 2, which we're going to multiply together. That's 6. That stays underneath the square root. And you've got it in fully simplified form. Let's take a look at three more examples. Okay, if you feel like you're getting the hang of these, see if you can pause the video and try these last three examples on your own, and we'll go through them together. So for number four, what would you do on this one, the square root of negative 81? Well, again, you can break this down into square root of negative 1 times the square root of 81. Square root of negative 1, we know that's i for imaginary. Square root of 81, what number times itself is 81? That's just 9. But we put the number in front in the i second, so this would be written as 9i. Okay, for number 5, try this one, the square root of negative 128. How would you do that one? Now that's a larger number, so this one I might use the prime factorization tree on. So this is really like square root of negative 1 times square root of positive 128. Square root of negative 1 we know is i for imaginary. 128 is uh, 2 times 64. 
64 is 2 times 32. 32 is 2 times 16. 16 is 2 times 8. 2 times 4. 2 times 2. And we're looking for groups of 2 of the same number. So let's see what we have here. We have one group of 2s, 2 group of 2s, 3 group of 2s with 1, 2 left over. So this is going to be 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8 i with a square root of 2 left over. Now remember, for each group, you end up getting one of these. So this is 2 times another 2 times another 2. Okay, and that's how I'm getting 8. You don't want to say 2 plus 2 plus 2 and say 6 or, you know, some other combination. You want to take for each group one of those out. And again, remember, this is like 4 square root of 4 is 2. This is like 4 square root of 4 is 2. Let's try the last example, number 6 now. What would you do on this one? Square root of negative 54. Well, let's see. This one, let's try it uh, by pulling out perfect squares on this one. So we could do square root of negative 1. 54 is actually 9 times 6. Square root of negative 1 is i for imaginary. Square root of 9 is 3. And we have this square root of 6 left over. But we generally write the number here first, the i second, and then our radical here, our square root is 6. And that's the final result. So great job. If you want more examples, you want to see another video I did talking about simplifying square roots, I'll put a video right there that you can check out. I'll see you over in that video.